So it occurs to me that it's been seven months since I've made a YouTube video. I think I should change that because people have been asking me about the truck and what's going on and well, why not, right? A lot, of, a lot of things have changed though. I got a new camera, obviously. You can see how this looks so much better. Um, a lot more definition there. I have lost 50 pounds, if you can't tell. Like, look at my face. It's just so much smaller on camera. You know, they say the camera's supposed to add like 10 pounds and I look like I had 20 of them pointed at me. So, yeah, I've lost about 50 pounds now. And, um, and no, the truck is still not done. <laughs> So the story behind the truck went like this. Everything was done. Everything was together, even so far as to have belts on the accessory drive. Harmonic balancer, massive three-core radiator. The only thing I hadn't done is finished plumbing up the fuel system with the, uh, the, the adjustable fuel pressure regulator from Aeromotive, and I hadn't put the fuel pump in the basket in the tank. And hadn't run the uh, the heavy gauge wiring for it because it needed to have a larger wire because it ran on more power. Um, everything together, ready to put fluids in it, and I'm doing research because I never stop. I never stop reading. I'm always looking into new stuff. I'm always wondering what's the new thing that's coming out. What are the, the new trends of what people are doing? Make these things hold up more power. I'm reading about rod bolts and ARP 2000 bolts um, are offered now in a larger diameter size. So for shits and giggles, I decided to pull up my parts list of the, of the uh, entire assembly that I purchased. And as it turns out, I got the ARP 2000 bolts in the larger diameter. I didn't do it on purpose. It just was a badass kit that I bought. I spent big money on. And uh, as I'm re uh, acclimating myself with the parts list, at the very bottom of the, of the entire list, there's a small note that says that the assemblies come unbalanced. Now, I had a conversation with the engine guy about the balance. He said, you want to do a balance? And I said, well, hell yeah. It's one of those things that it doesn't, there's, when you, whenever you do a modification to a vehicle, motorcycle, car, whatever, camshafts, high flow intakes, Whatever you do, there's always a give and a take. And in order to take extra horsepower, you usually have to give up things like drivability, uh, smooth idle, good fuel economy. There's always a give and a take. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. But with a balance, there is no give. It's all take, other than the money that comes out of your pocket, $275 to balance the assembly. So I said, Go ahead and balance it. Balance the fucking shit out of it. Because if you can get it closer, all it does is help. And he said, well, if it's already been balanced, it doesn't need to be balanced again. Um, I'll know when I pull the stuff out of the box if it's been balanced or not. Now, what I did not tell him, part of the balancing process is that you take all the pistons and you weigh them. And then whichever one weighs the least becomes the normal. And every other piston, you take a little bit of metal off of it until they all weigh the same. And you do the same thing with the rods, and you do the same thing with the wrist pins. And the idea is that you eventually get everything that weight matched. Well, this assembly came weight matched. So I have a feeling what happened is he pulled it out the box, he saw the little score mark, the little rub mark where it's been weight matched, and he said, oh, this assembly's been balanced but it hasn't been balanced. When I asked Summit Racing about this, I said, how come you guys don't balance these things? He said, well, it's because we don't know which wrist pin you're using and we don't know which ring pack you're using because different materials weigh different amounts. And to balance one properly, what you do is you take the crank and you put it in the machine and then you get a weight. It has to weigh as much as the rod, the piston, the wrist pin, and the ring pack all together. You put these weights on the crankshaft and you balance it with a simulated weight to whatever your assembly is actually going to weigh. So even though everything was weight matched, the crank itself was not balanced. So I called him back and I said, hey, by chance did you balance this thing? And he said, no, I didn't. Well, I just found out they come unbalanced. And he said, 
you can't race it like that. It was the first thing out of his mouth. You can't race it like that. You can drive it like that on the street, but you can't race it like that. I said, Scotty, I built this thing to run. This thing's essentially built to hold 1,500 horsepower. I want to put 1,000 at the tire with a safety cushion. And he said, well, it's got to come apart. So, um, truck came apart. My stepfather did it while I was on the road. And he dropped the motor off to Scotty. And Scotty said, well, give me, uh, give me two weeks. Ended up being like nine because it's race season now. And, you know, he's busy. He's a busy guy. He does a lot of good work. And, um, just got the call back, you know, like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I say that. That, uh, the engine's ready. And then I caught COVID. So I've been fighting COVID for the last two weeks. I'm out of it now. I got an immunization shot thing, which was really rough for me. If you know me, I got a phobia of needles and I almost passed out. Um, freaked out the ladies who were doing the, uh, the injections, but I got it done. Feeling a whole lot better. And, um, have yet to have the chance to go back over to Scotty's and pick up the engine. Um, now the delay in time also gave me the opportunity to send him an SFI approved flex plate, which is stupid that I didn't have one already on there. They were so expensive back then. Now I find a cheap one. They were, they were like $300 and now they're like 85. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll throw 85 bucks at that and send that. So hopefully he did the balance with the flex plate on it that's SFI approved. I got like four flex plates for this damn truck. I got the original that was on it. I got a 4L80 one because I thought my 4L80 swap, I'd need a 4L80 flex plate. Nope, the converter I got was for an, uh, a conversion. So I needed an, a dish style flex plate like an LS1. So then I went out and bought a dish style flex plate for a Camaro, like a 2002 Camaro, LS1 style. And then uh, that's what I sent that's what I put together with the whole truck, and it's also what was on the motor when I sent everything over to Scotty to have it balanced. And then, like I said, I sent him another flex plate in the mail, just from Amazon, because I found it you know, relatively inexpensive, to do the balance. So, I got four flex plates floating around for this damn motor. So if anybody needs a 4L80 flex plate, or they need an LS1 flex plate, I got you, man. Just give me a call. It's just sitting, doing nothing. I'm not gonna do anything with it, so. Anyways, long story short, motor is done. Got to go pick it up, put the whole truck back together. Still got to put the fuel pump in the tank. Still got to put the, run the uh, heavy gauge wiring to the fuel pump so we don't burn up the uh, factory stuff. And still got to finish plumbing the fuel system. Everything in the system is all Aeromotive. I got it all from Aeromotive directly. Spent big money on freaking fuel lines and I've got... When I called the guy and I said, look, I need a fuel filter in line. He said, okay, how much power are you gonna make? I said, uh, well, I mean, it's gonna be like estimated 1500 on E85. He said, all right, I got a 1500 horse uh, pump. It'll definitely flow enough for all that. And I said, uh, hey, Brent? He goes, yeah. I said, double the size of it. I don't wanna have to have this thing apart and replace it. He says, you want a 3000 horsepower filter? I said, yeah. Is it, does it filter to a different micron number? He said, oh no, 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 it's just double the capacity. It's got double the flow. I'm gonna have to put big reducers on both ends of it, but you won't have to change out the filter medium in the, in the, in the inside the fuel filter for a very long period of time. I said, that's good. That's exactly what I'm, I'm cool with that. So everything is set, dash eight, PTFE line, which is not the same as damn any other fuel line apparently. They don't even call it AN fittings. They call them PTFN, PTFENs. Uh, all Fergola, made in the United States. All the good stuff, man. This truck better be badass, or I'm never gonna build another fuel injected vehicle for the rest of my life. It's gonna be carbureted and mechanical fuel pumps <laughs> from here on out. And if it makes 500 horsepower, I'll be happy. But this thing, this thing better be absolutely badass. But I built it to put a turbo on, so that's what I got. So anyways, there's your update on the truck. Got to go pick up the motor. Got to put it all back together. Once that's together, I plan on driving it for a while. The uh, the Great White Buffalo is no longer called the Great Light Buffalo. I call it 
Moby Dick, the great white whale. And um, I have another motor sitting on the floor in the shop to build for that. But I don't know if I want to jump in on that project for a while. I think I uh, might want to play around with some cheap motorcycles because the car stuff is just so expensive. I could pick up a dirt cheap motorcycle for like 500 bucks, clean the carburetors out, and drive the damn thing across the country if I feel like it. It'd be so much more cost effective. But um, there's your update. I don't know. You got any questions, man? Leave me a comment or when you see me in person because only like five people watch these videos anyway. Just ask me. I have to wait for me. Seven months. I'm sorry. I'll do better about that. I plan on doing more. Um, oh, today is the 8th, the 15th, 16th? Basically a week from today. A week from today, Spectator Drags, Danger Ranger 9000 at the Freedom Factory. I'm going to bring... Moby Dick out there, and I'm going to try and grudge match uh, J.H. Diesel again, because he whooped my ass the last time I went out there, and um, now I'm coming back out with actual brakes. I didn't realize my rear brakes weren't working at all. I just figured they were kind of weak. Uh, now I've got actual brakes, and I've got Coney shocks all the way around, and i got a gutted catalytic converter, and i got a new map sensor. So is it still a slow hunk of shit? Yes. But it's going to be a whole lot quicker and a whole lot snappier than it was. It's going to be able to corner a whole lot better. So hopefully I can get out there and uh, grudge match uh, GH Diesel around the around the track in his donk. Because that's basically what he was riding was a donk with a 456 gear set and everything else bone stock factory. But the whole car was lifted. Um, and then hang out with uh, my boy Nick, Nick Lateau, Mr. Burnout Van, uh, Plumber's Crack plumber's van for the Danger Ranger 9000. He's actually going to be competing. Um, it's going to be a good time. I'm pretty psyched about that. So, come on out to the Freedom Factory. Have a blast. It's a Saturday. The night before is drift night on Friday night. If you want to come out and slide your car around some cones, um, go on thefoat.com. That's T-H-E-F-O-A-T and uh, submit pictures of your vehicle if you want to get a pit pass and go out there and race I mean no race car stuff though it's all street cars DOT legal tires they don't want any ringers going out there and whooping the crap out of everybody they want everybody just regular everyday man that's what they want they want the everyday guys the the, 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 the heart and soul of the American hot rod movement just the, the amateur guys the super amateurs driving street cars it's gonna be a good time Come out, have a couple beers, have a couple hot dogs, maybe have a couple Bartle Skeet, Dr. Pepper, whatever, whatever soda you like. Get a hell yeah brother combo. Be there, be square.